Don't buy an AMD GPU. They're literal garbage. If you do, your computer, it won't even turn on. If it does, you'll try to run a game, your screen will turn black. You don't have DLSS. How will you trace rays? In other words, what I'm getting at here is if you read the comment section on the internet on a lot of, well, pretty much anything that features AMD versus NVIDIA, you're gonna see a lot of comments saying that AMD GPUs are just not worth it. They're a bad purchase, even if they're cheaper than NVIDIA. And this puts a lot of fear into people. They think about the driver issues, the horrible, terrifying AMD driver issues, the AMD software, AMD, how could you be a content creator? They don't have an NVENC encoder. So all of those issues, and I don't think those issues are all just completely imagined out of nowhere, but obviously, you know, the more extreme fanboy comments are a little extreme. But how much of this is based in reality? Well, that was what I was wondering when I actually ended up buying my RX 6800 XT. What even happened? Why did I buy an RX 6800 XT? Honestly, I wanted a 3080. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you may have already heard some of this in bits and pieces, but some of you guys just clicked on the video. Hi, welcome to the channel. Anyway, <laughs> so what happened was when the 3080 came out, I was hesitant to try to buy it at launch. I didn't even try, and I probably couldn't have if, if I had tried. Because for one thing, it only had 10 gigabytes of VRAM, which I was worried about the longevity of that at higher resolutions. And I also thought the price was too high. Yeah, I thought the launch MSRP price was too high. Wow, that didn't, it didn't really age well. And I didn't think it was necessarily too high. I thought it might be too high for me. I didn't want to spend that much. I usually have spent between $300 and $500 on a GPU. My last couple were a R uh, GTX, not RTX, GTX 970 and an RTX 2070. So I'm usually a skip a generation by the, not the high end, but the like, like mid high, right? That 70 class card tends to be where I go. So this time around, I was thinking, you know, I might actually buy high end, but I was hesitant on pulling the trigger on the 3080. And then the price went up and up and up and up and up. And it, it can't possibly go up some more. No, it went up some more. It, it's going to stop. No, it, it, it's still going up. It went up for a long time. And then it started coming back down a bit. I'm like, hey, maybe I can actually buy one this generation. And then it kind of flatlined and it's it stayed high and much higher than the launch MSRP. And at that point I was like, do I buy a card at all? Well, I made this YouTube channel about a, almost a year ago, last October, and I started generating enough ad revenue off it that I'm not getting rich and I'm not quitting my day job, but I can at least save up a few months to maybe buy a GPU that I can then use on the channel. And that's what I did. I had about $1,200 saved up from a few months of ad revenue. And I was like, I'm gonna buy myself a 3080, except I couldn't get an 80, uh, 3080 for $1,200, but, I was able to find an RX 6800 XT that actually sat in stock on B&H Photo, is where I got it, for $1199. And $1199 is just an insane amount of money compared to what I would like to have spent on it. But in the current market, I just really don't see the prices coming down that much anytime soon. Hopefully when Ethereum actually does fully proof of stake or whatever that is, I don't follow crypto that much, theoretically that's going to be our like, oh! we can now all buy GPUs moment? I don't think so. I, I think the prices might come down a bit, but it's not gonna solve the like global chip shortage and the inflation and, and increased costs and, and just the fact that manufacturers know they can charge more now because they're selling out. I eventually went ahead and bought that RX 6800 XT, but I'm, I'm not gonna lie. When I was pressing that add to cart button, I was a little bit worried because it had been a long time since I'd had an, a had an AMG GPU. AMD GPU, that's a lot of letters. I think I said them right. Anyway, the driver issues, the software issues, I need that NVENC encoder, I'm a content creator. Is this gonna be a huge problem? So let's actually break down my real experience with this now that I've had it for, what is it, a month and a half, two months now, something like that. I don't remember what day I bought it. <laughs> But what has my real experience been like? Well, let's break this into two categories. We've got the typical gaming, like what you would probably do, and then there's the content creation for my YouTube channel, which may or may not be something that you would do. Anyway, let's start with the actual normal gaming, and then I'll jump into the content creation stuff after that. So, normal gaming. How does the RX 6800 XT do? Well, as long as you're not, to tra not trying to trace those rays, 
absolutely phenomenal. I bought it when I bought this uh, 4K OLED TV over here. This thing is just phenomenal, by the way. I know Linus just did a video talking about the burn-in on OLEDs. So far, I haven't had any, but I haven't had it as long as he has. I don't know, guys. It's so good that if you're not the if you're not terrified of the idea of maybe having to get a new one in a couple years because it burned in, then I I can't re recommend it enough. It, it's just fantastic. But watch my video on that if you're interested. I, let's stay focused. AMD. So for 4K gaming on that, fantastic. For the most part, stays above 60 frames per second in any game I try, as long as I'm willing to tweak a few settings in some of the more demanding games. Like games like Cyberpunk, you just gotta turn some settings down or resolution scale a bit. And that's the thing, at 4K, you can resolution scale down a bit and get much better performance, and it still looks almost identical to native. And AMD's FSR does a fantastic job for that in games that support it. You have uh, way more games coming out now with it than I ever anticipated because it's so much easier to add into games, at least supposedly, than uh, DLSS is. And, and I, I said supposedly, but like, it is easier to add to games. Considering we have apps like Lossless Scaling and Magpie that I've reviewed, they can pretty much just add it to any game, although it's not as good as the original. It messes up variable refresh rate, it has some overhead. So don't get confused and, and judge FSR based on those because they're adding it in at the end of the render pipeline. They're not perfect. They can be fun to play with, though. But it does seem like, yeah, FSR is just a spatial up upscaler. It's pretty easy out of games. And at the ultra quality setting at 4K and at 1440p, it's fantastic. In fact, at 4K, I like it better than DLSS. So let's address that elephant in the room. Do I, do I miss DLSS? Because I had an RTX 2070 before this. I would like to have the ability to use DLSS, but I don't really miss it that much. Honestly, the main thing I miss it for is I used to do videos where I would test out side-by-side -side image comparisons with DLSS on and off. And I don't do that anymore because I don't have the ability. But in my actual gaming, I never really used DLSS unless I absolutely had to, and I couldn't get playable frame rates by tweaking the settings a bit. Because DLSS adds in image artifacting, like ghosting, and thing and um, can cause weird things. Like in Cyberpunk, a lot of like straight lines would end up kind of jaggedy and shimmery when you're in motion. And I do say in motion because a lot of times people are like well, DLSS actually makes the image look better than native. Well, there can be some situations where that is the case, especially if it's replacing a bad anti-aliasing implementation in a game. But in general. The little uh, it advantages that it gets kind of break down a bit in motion, and overall, I'd always prefer a game to have DLSS off if I'm able to get good settings and frame rates without it. So when do you need, uh, when do you really need DLSS? Well, when you're trying to trace those rays. And to be honest, I even when I had my RTX 2070 and was playing at 1440p. I didn't really use ray tracing there either, because in general, I just don't think that tech is at a point where GPUs can really use it effectively to be worth the cost. Because the cost is either a massive hit to your frame rate, and or having to turn on a technology like DLSS or some other resolution scaler like FSR, which don't look as good as native. They just don't. And so, Unless the ray tracing is just mind-blowingly good and I can still get pretty good frame rates, I'm generally going to leave it off unless I could just get good frame rates with it on. And there are games like that even at 4K, like Resident Evil Village, for example, where the 6800 XT can nail it. And at 1440p, I think it can do just fine in ray tracing single-player games if you really want to. I did a whole video on that as well. Now, speaking of 1440p and gaming performance, the 6800 XT is so good at 1440p that my PC actually can't even handle it. I need to upgrade my CPU if you stay tuned to the channel. Sometime in the next few months, I'll probably do an entire rebuild where I poured over the 6800 XT but build on a high-end CPU, new case, new power supply RAM, all of that. Anyway, the point is, at lower resolutions, I'm oftentimes bottlenecked by my CPU, which is an i5-9600K. It's not a terrible CPU. Um, but the 6800 XT is just that powerful. So, really, I'm absolutely happy with the gaming performance. Have I run into any of those driver's issues where just games just go to black screens? Yes. Yes, I have. 
Maybe you weren't expecting that. You thought this was gonna be all positives. Nope, this is not all positives. Although I will just mention, I did occasionally have driver issues on NVIDIA cards too. It's not like every game always worked perfectly instantly at launch and never had problems. So, have I had issues on AMD? Yes, the main one I noticed was when I was trying to test out uh, Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, I was getting frequent crashes where it seemed like my PC stayed on, but I lost the signal to my monitor, and I'd have to hold down the power button on the PC and turn it off all the way that way, and turn it back on. That happened a few times. Other than that, I think I had something similar to that happen once in Cyberpunk, right after they did the uh, did a new patch update. So I think, and it hadn't been doing that before. So it seemed more like a Cyberpunk is a buggy mess issue than that was really AMD's fault. Other than that, I have not had driver issues in gaming. Wait till I get to content creation in just a second. I'll expand on that a bit. How about the software? I've done a series of videos reviewing AMD's software features. I absolutely love it, and I think it beats NVIDIA hands down. NVIDIA has GeForce Experience, and they have their control panel. AMD combines both of those things into their software, all of those features, and more. And I think it looks better, it's convenient to have it all in one place, and I think it does as good or a better job now, if you're talking about gameplay encoding with the, en the actual encoder itself, again, I'll review that more when I get to content creation rather than straight up gaming. But I'm able to do some really good overclocking and undervolting right there in AMD's own software. I don't need to use any third party stuff like MSI Afterburner unless I want to. It has great uh, performance metrics uh, that I can overlay when I'm doing my benchmark videos, especially when MSI Afterburner isn't compatible with another game. This one's been working for me. AMD Boost is kind of neat. I played with that. AMD Chill is a really cool frame rate limiter and then some. It's not just a frame rate limiter. There's really cool features in there. Not only that, but some people have issues with custom resolution, like wi custom widescreen resolutions on this OLED TV. I just set the resolution and away I go. It works flawlessly with AMD. So take that, NVIDIA. Honestly, I'm not on a side here if we're talking about the, the red versus green battle here. In my opinion, companies might act more pro-consumer than the other one if they feel that's in their best financial interest. But companies are not people, and they aren't good or bad generally. They're just out to make a profit in whatever method they see is the best way to make a profit. So I don't like either company, and I don't hate either company. I just like competition, and I'm happy to see what Intel uh, hopefully brings to that competition in the near future. So to sum up my gaming performance, yeah, I wouldn't really be using ray tracing if I was on NVIDIA anyway, and I'd avoid DLSS unless I absolutely needed it. In the games that I actually play, the 6800 XT is absolutely crushing it. I don't really need more performance, although I'll probably buy a new GPU when they come out anyway, just because I have a YouTube channel where I, where I uh, you know, review things <laughs> anyway. So, jumping over to content creation. Here I have seen some more issues. So let's just start with the encoder. If I was a live streamer, that would be a bigger issue because here's the main difference I see between the encoders. AMD's encoder can capture fantastic looking video, but I need to set it to a higher bit rate than Nvidia's to get an equal quality, uh, quality footage. So that means my file sizes are larger. Now that's not really the end of the world for me. My uploads take a little longer and it's a little harder for my PC to handle it in the editing process. But if I was a live streamer, that would mean my stream just didn't look as good. Because at the same bitrate, NVIDIA looks better. AMD can look just as good at a higher bitrate, but when you're live streaming, there's a limit to the bitrate that you can go to. So if I was a live streamer, that would probably be a big deal. Although you can also just stream using, you know, your CPU cores or something rather than the built-in encoders if you have a good enough PC to handle that. The other thing with content creation that I've noticed is OBS. I use OBS to do a lot of my videos, and in that program, there's a really annoying issue. Sometimes I, I record a video, and then I want to record again, and I click record again, and it's not recording. It's just stopped, it didn't work. And I actually have to close the program and restart the program to get it to record again. 
And not only that, sometimes when you close the program, it didn't really close. I actually have to open up my task manager and kill the process, otherwise it's still running in the background. And this absolutely is a known issue between AMD and OBS. And it, like I think it's documented in the drivers as a known issue. <laughs> so unfortunately, it's a really annoying problem. Now, now that I'm aware of it, I can work around it, but it's still annoying. And when I first was dealing with this and didn't know of this issue, I lost hours of work time and videos that I could have made. I run this channel as a hobby on very limited free time. My daughter's eating lunch right now and I'm trying to quickly record a video while she's, while she's doing that, okay? Anyway, so yeah, that lost me some time. It was annoying. I can deal with it though. Other than that, not really that many problems. In my DaVinci Resolve editing program, it, I feel like things have been a bit slower, but I think that's actually because I'm dealing with higher bitrate files because I'm recording at higher bit rates because I don't have the NVENC encoder. So it is still related to an AMD issue. So other than that, things have been going just fine. Now, do I regret the purchase? Should I have just saved up a bit more for a 3080? Absolutely not. So. If they were the same price, I would buy the 3080. If they're not the same price, I would buy the 3080 if it was a little bit more. $50 more? Maybe $100 more, but probably not, to be honest. Because those few little issues aren't that big of a deal. Honestly, I think you guys don't be afraid to give AMD a shot unless like ray tracing is just your thing and you have to have it. Also DLSS versus FSR. I actually prefer FSR at ultra quality at 4K, but at lower resolutions, I think DLSS does a much better job, uh, especially down at 1080p and especially if you're at 1080p and like rendering significantly below that. So at the more aggressive settings, which I would never use personally, I do think DLSS does a better job. So it would certainly be nice to have. I'm interested in ray tracing on a future series of GPUs. So right now, I don't think NVIDIA's 3000 series even is at a place where I would be using ray tracing at 4K because I'd prefer the high frame rates and without having to heavily use DLSS. And that's a personal thing, you might care more or less. So I think if it's like hundreds of dollars different, like when I was buying this, I could get the AMD GPU for $1,200 and the in-stock 3080s were more like $1,600 or more. It's not worth a $400 difference at all for me. I don't regret my decision. I don't think you guys need to be scared of buying an AMD GPU. Yes, there are some issues. They are real, but they're also completely overblown. Okay, I hope all of you have an excellent day.